All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to take out a... T yeah. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to take your, uh, your vintage coach with a wet bay looking like this and turn it into something that looks like this. So one of the things that I really don't like about the coach is the wet bay. It doesn't flow. Haha, <laughs> a pun not intended. It has water hoses hook in where they block other things. Uh, they, they don't hook in right uh, where they can have some weight on them, they can kink. So what I'd like to do is to set this up so that I only pull one hose out, hook that up to the faucet, and be done with it. And so here is the, here's the project for the day. Okay, so we've got a couple of things here that I want to hook into this system. So the first thing we have here is a pressure regulator. This is imperative. Uh, sometimes you can get to RV parks and the pressure can be way too high and that'll blow the lines in your system. Um, and you want to protect against that. So this pre pressure regulator is not the cheap inline kind that you can get or the, the cheap little one, one piece kind that you can get at Camping World or online. This is one where I can actually set what the pressure allowed through. So if if the camp has 100, 100 pounds per square inch water and I, I like 60, but the Camping World thing or that little cheap one will only do 40, I'm, I'm missing out on a little bit better shower. <laughs> so this one I can actually set the pressure coming into the rig. The next thing I want to make sure that I have are a couple of elbows. We'll see, we'll see that later. I want to hook in a, uh, a water filter. Uh, these, these, and I want to do it in, a, in an inexpensive way. I don't want to buy a two or three hundred dollar uh, water filter. If you're full time, that's fine, but but we're not. So this little inline filter is just perfect. Um, I also have a, a backflow preventer. I also have a digital gauge that tells me how much water has gone through it. So this is especially useful if I want to fill up my fresh tank. I can know exactly how many gallons are going in. Um, and then I also have a sprinkler timer. We'll get to that in a minute. And then I also have this this right here, and this is an adapter that we'll get to at the end of the video. Um, I need some tools for this. I've got uh, some screwdrivers, uh, some Teflon tape, a pair of pliers. We're also going to need um, some U-clamps and some screws, and you're also going to need certain lengths of garden hose, or, or water hose rather, and you're also going to need a bag of these connectors because we're going to be making different lengths of water hose to hook all of this stuff in to then plumb in to the wet bay so this is the this is the left side of the wet bay you can see um, you can see right there is the water pump and then over here is the spigot and the city water inlet the tank fill um, the water pump switch up there and then for some reason they put uh, a place to put in your park cable there um, and then over here is the that right there is the black tank the gray tank is is back inside and you can see the valves there so we're gonna be plumbing up all of this water so that we only have to have one water line and do it in a safe way that's the project let's get to it all right so as you can see down here in the bottom of my bay here is where the water hose can come in so that I can leave the water bay door closed so the, the plan here I'll show a picture up on the screen but the plan here is to go in from that and over and then up the side of that, then across the top and I can mount uh, my pressure regulator and my water gauge there, then have it come down to a Y and split and it can go into the city water inlet and then another cable can go through this hole right there and over on this side to the black tank flush so that way I can just turn off water going into the rig and turn on water going over here to the black tank flush and be able to only do everything I need to do with one garden hose hookup so let's now that we know what we're doing let's start uh, let's start putting stuff together okay so since cutting water hoses riveting uh, video I'll skip you all that but what we're gonna do is take our cutters and cut the garden hose that's all we do. Then what we're going to do is take a hose clamp and put it over the garden hose, or the water hose rather. We'll put the end fitting 
in. We'll slide the hose clamp back up and then we'll secure it. And that's all there is to it. Now you do this to the every other end of the hose that you've that you're making. Okay, so all the lengths of uh, water hose have been uh, put the ends on, and then I also wrap some uh, black electrical tape around them uh, so the hose clamps don't don't cut anybody while we're back here. And so now all we've got to do is just uh, is just place the things where we want them. Okay, so the first hose is the longer of them. And it actually still has the original end and this is going to be what comes in there will be on one end i have my quick disconnect so my exterior water hose can just hook up to that okay so the first hose is this hose right here it's the longest it's the one that still has the original end on it and what i do is i have a an exterior hose that goes from the hose bib uh, or the spigot to the to the rv and so what i'll have is this kind of poking down through the bottom so that can go through the bottom. I've got a quick disconnect end on the end, so that can kind of go down through the little flap here. And we'll then go over to the water filter. Now, the reason that I've done it this way is this makes the water filter easy for me to get to. So then when it's time to change it out, I can just unscrew some screws and out it goes. So we will get two of these U-clamps and some screws. I can go ahead and start the back side of these. By the way, these are two inch U-clamps. You know what, before we put that through, let's put the next hose on, which will be, for me, the medium length one. Now, that looks like there's going to be some, there could be some tugging on this. So what I want to do is do another bracket over here at the bottom so that it kind of holds this, this drinking hose against the wall and it doesn't pull on that against the filter. All right, so now let's take a look and let's see. So now you can see the water hose comes in from the bottom. So there's that. I can just drop that out. And then for travel, we'll just pull that back in, but that will go to that guide and then up to the water filter. And then that hose is going to come over and then hook into my other couple of things right here. All right, it's also important to make sure that on every fitting that you do, you put pipe tape on there. So up here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect these two things together. So I'll have my water timer or my, my gallon counter, if you will, and then also my pressure valve wired to get uh, put together. And I'm gonna put this right where I can see it real easy. Now the final hose is the hose that's gonna go to the Y adapter. We'll go ahead and put some tape on this one and some tape on both of these connections. All right, so the Y has got tape on both sides and we will go ahead and fit it to the end of this smaller hose. And then we will fit this on the end of the pressure regulator. So now we have our final hose that's going to go over to So now we have an elbow. We're going to put this elbow right here on the city water connection. And that's going to go to our water connection here. So what we're going to do now is wire this up to the other side which is the black tank rinse and that's the next part that we're going to work on 
But while we're here, I'm going to do one final thing, and that is I'm going to add an adapter. And this is the adapter here. You can get this at Lowe's. I'll put this link in the description below. But what this, what this is, is it's got an internal pipe thread, and I'm going to put that right over top of this outlet right here on the sink. I've taken the spigot to the sink off, and now I have this, and what this does is it changes the threads from this sink or this faucet thread to here is a garden hose thread. So what I can do is I can come off of this with my zero G, uh, my zero G water hose and take this out and we can set up a warm shower outside or a place that has warm water that we can wash our hands, that kind of stuff. So it just expands the use of this because nobody's going to get in here to wash your hands with all this stuff around here. So now we're going to move on over to the, uh, the black tank area. All right, so here in the black tank area, you can see here where the hose comes through. And we're going to add a couple of things onto the end of this hose. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to attach this sprinkler, uh, this water sprinkler timer to this hose. Now, why in the world would I attach a water sprinkler timer to the hose going into my black tank flush? Well, there's a reason. If you have ever forgotten to leave your black tank flush on, and walked away and the black tank filled up and then flooded your RV with all sorts of nastiness, you'll know why I have this. This, I can turn it on for about eight minutes. Eight minutes is not gonna overflow this. That's the first tick on here is eight minutes. So I can turn this on for eight minutes and let it run. And if I have forgotten to leave my black tank valve closed, if I've left it closed, it won't overflow in the RV. It'll just shut off and I'll have a full black tank. Um, but that, is just a safety measure for me not overflowing the black tank. Now, after the sprinkler timer, you're going to need this. Uh, you're going to need this um, this adapter that goes on here. That goes on the other side. I'm sorry. I've got a short piece of hose that is flexible. So as we ride down the road, this thing's going to bounce. So I wanted some uh, some protection in there. So we'll put that on there. And then at the end of that. We have a couple more things. The first thing is this backflow preventer. This, you don't want water coming back from your black tank back through here and then back into your freshwater side. And I know some places don't even, some people don't even want to hook, uh, they'll run two water lines. They just don't. Well, I've got a back pro, backflow preventer and a lot of stuff. I'm not real concerned about that. New coaches have one water, water line coming in. So backflow preventer on the end of this. Then finally, we'll put an elbow on the end of this, and we will hook the elbow to the black tank rinse. And so that's what we'll be doing now. Okay, so there you have it. There is that set up. So now we will a little bit of review all right so first i have the end of this hose that's hanging out down here and when we go to travel i can just pop it up into here so leave that open drop it out and now we can hook up down here that will come in and then come up to our water filter that will then come up and over to our water counter or water gauge basically and then to our washer pressure our water pressure regulator that will come down here to a Y. At the Y, I can leave this on going into the coach and leave this off going over to the black tank rinse. When I want to rinse the black tank, I can turn it off here and then turn it on here. And now the water will come through, through that hole, over to here to my sprinkler timer where I can turn this on eight minutes. And then the water will go there through that backflow preventer and into the black tank. Okay, so all in all, this has been a project that, uh, that we have really liked. Uh, this really does speed up connection, at least for the water, uh, when we hook up. I can just pull one of those water hoses out, hook it up, and then hook it up to the hose, hose bib and be done with it. I also, with that sprinkler timer and the pack, backflow preventer, I'm, I'm sure that w b dirty water's not coming back and I won't overflow the black tank into the coach. Again, this has just been a fantastic modification. Um, every water bay seems to be different, so different stuff will work for you, but routing the water out and around and over and away from everything, giving me room to work 
is just an awesome, awesome, great upgrade. So I hope this has helped you. Hope this maybe may start have you start thinking about different ways that you can organize your water bay. Get out there, RV. Have fun with your family. Make sure you make it to church on Sunday.